So you can't quite figure out how to get your audio to work the way you want it using a two PC setup. Well, you've come to the right place because I'm gonna show you how to make it all work. What's up everyone, welcome to the RA Visuals YouTube channel where you'll always find high quality visuals and high quality tech. And today I'll be taking you a bit deeper into the rabbit hole of my setup that I use to get high quality audio and my recordings and streams using my dual PC setup that I have back there. Now this is because I noticed a bunch of you guys out there had some very solid questions regarding audio on my first dual PC setup video. So I decided we needed a dedicated video on this topic. So let's hop right into it right after a quick word from our sponsor. Stop overpaying for Windows 10 and 11 activation keys. <laughs> With VIP URCD key, you can install and activate Windows for only 16 bucks. Hey, that's pretty good. It's fast, easy, and 100% legit. To get started, head over to VIPURCDKey.com and search for the software that you're looking for and add it to your cart. If you're installing Windows, be sure that the key you purchase is the same as what is installed on your system. Once your product is in the cart, you can now enter my new promo code for 2023, RAV25, which will now save you 25% on your purchase. From here, you just need to follow the prompts and purchase your key with your preferred payment method. I personally always choose PayPal. Once your payment is done, navigate to your user center and click on My purchased orders. This is where you'll find your activation code once your payment is processed. From here, it's as easy as copying your key from the user center and pasting it into the Windows activation page on your desktop. You'll now have a fully activated version of Windows 10 that is also upgradable to a Windows 11 if you want. So check out the links below and save yourself some money. Now, let's get back to the video. Okay, getting right into this, let me walk you through the gear that I'm currently using to make my audio setup work because some of it has actually changed a little bit since my last dual PC video that I did. First, let's start off with what is probably the most important part of my audio setup, the Go XLR Mini. This handy little audio mixer has been the key to me being able to capture audio from both of my PCs and send it back to OBS into my recordings or out to you guys on stream. The reason I decided to go with this mixer is because it is small and compact, but is still packed with features like its own built-in preamp and physical fader sliders that I can adjust on the fly. It also has a you know physical mute button, a bleep button, and a mic off button that again, just basically give the user more power to do what you wanna do at your fingertips. Oh, and of course, it has RGB as well, so it looks really cool in your setup. Another piece of gear that is essential to my audio setup is, of course, my microphone. For the last couple of months, I've been using the Mayono PD400X microphone paired with their BA90 boom arm, and this combo has been nothing but amazing for me since Mayono was kind enough to send it out for review, and uh, I did actually do a full video on this setup, so if you guys are interested in seeing that, go ahead and click up here and check that video out because I go really in-depth with it. But for only 220 bucks for this combo, you're getting a mic and boom arm that are basically, in my opinion, just as good, if not better, than some of the setups that probably cost like double the price. Finally, the the last main piece of my gear that I use to monitor my levels and hear my gameplay audio while gaming or streaming are the KZ ZS10 Pro in-ear monitors. Now I switched to using these about a year ago and I honestly have not looked back at any over-the-ear headset since. This $45 set of in-ears sound better than any gaming headset that I've ever worn and the soundstage you get from them uh, going through GoXLR's built-in preamp is just amazing. Now along with those items, there are a couple of small things that you need to grab to also make this setup work. First, you need to grab a pair of 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cables. These are for running audio from your Go XLR to your streaming PC and vice versa. Along with these cables, I suggest picking up a set of ground loop noise isolators. Now, if you don't know what these are or what they do, they basically eliminate the hiss, buzz, and interference caused by ground loops which happens you know, when the audio source and the speaker use the same power source. And this is usually in like car speakers, home stereo systems, and Bluetooth receivers. But yeah, this also is present with the Go XLR Mini I've found. So I noticed right away when I tested my Go XLR Mini in this configuration that there was a hiss or humming noise in the background of my audio. And these $10 little adapters solved the problem almost immediately and took all that random noise right away. Now, one last thing you may need but isn't required 
required, but may help you also, is a couple of USB extension cables. I personally needed to use one to uh, reach my gaming PC from the Go XLR because the included cable just isn't long enough for my setup. So I bought a pack of like 10 of these extensions a long time ago and I've used them for a bunch of things in my setup in order to cable manage them and keep them really tidy. Okay, now that you know the gear that I'm gonna be using in this video, let me show you how to connect it and make it work with a two PC setup. Now, like I said, I'll be using the Go XLR Mini for this walkthrough, but this should also work somewhat for other mixers as long as you have both an audio in and out port on the back of your mixer. So the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and connect the Go XLR or mixer you're using to your gaming PC. The reason we wanna connect it to our gaming PC and not our streaming PC is so that when we can easily capture our audio from our game that we're gonna be playing and send it back to our streaming PC and at the same time, plug our headphones into our Go XLR or mixer and be able to hear our game audio and adjust the levels to our liking from that piece of kit. So once you've plugged in your power cable and then plugged in the USB cable of the Go XLR to your gaming PC, it should just find it right away and begin installing some initial drivers. But that's not all you need. You also need to go to the TC Helicon website and download the latest driver and software package for your Go XLR mixer. This works for either the mini or the full size one. So once you do this and get the software up and running, your mixer is good until we get to the software settings portion of this video, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Okay, so we have our mixer plugged in and drivers installed on our gaming PC. Now we need to actually get the audio from the gaming PC over to the streaming PC and vice versa. That is where the two 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cables and the ground loop isolators come in you'll want to plug both ground loop isolators into the audio in and audio out ports on the back of the Go XLR first. Once you've done that, take both 3.5 millimeter aux cables and plug one of the male ends into the female end of the ground loop isolators. With that done, we need to take the other male ends of the 3.5 millimeter cables and run those over to the motherboard of our streaming PC. That'll be located on the back of your PC most times. And I'll say that one more time. This is the motherboard of your streaming PC. So this is the part that might confuse some of you, but I'll try my hardest to make it easy to understand. You need to take the cable that is run to the audio in on your Go XLR and then run it to the audio out on your streaming PC's motherboard. And with the second cable, you do the exact opposite. You take the cable that is plugged into the out on the Go XLR and run it to the audio in on your streaming PC. This will in turn create a loop of audio that will allow you to capture your mic audio, your game audio, your music, and your friends audio in Discord as you guys are chatting and even your alerts in OBS. Now after you have all of that set up, you simply just need to plug in your XLR mic of choice to your Go XLR. Like I said earlier, I currently use the Mayono PD400X and I simply just connect an XLR cable from my mic into the back of the Go XLR Mini and I'm done. Now the Go XLR Mini does have a mic port in the front of it as well, so you can actually use a mic that has a 3.5 millimeter connection too, if that is something that you would wanna do. Okay, the hardware is all set up and good to go. So now it's time to set up our software so we can actually capture that crispy audio for our streams and our recordings. First thing I want you to do is open up your Go XLR software and navigate to the routing tab. Now this table is very powerful and allows you to do a lot of things, but what you really need to worry about right now for the dual PC setup is that you wanna make sure that all the channels that you wanna send audio from your gaming PC to your streaming PC is set to line out and th make sure those are checked. Again, this is because we're using those 3.5 millimeter cables to send audio over to the streaming PC from the gaming PC. Also, if you set everything and you notice that you can hear yourself when you speak into your microphone, it's because the headphone output mic is probably checked in this routing table. This is the feature on the Go XLR that allows you to monitor your mic audio. So I recommend actually checking this when you want to adjust your mic levels and settings, and we'll get to that later in the video. But for right now, if you, if you think it's annoying, just go ahead and uncheck it. Next thing we need to do is go into the sound settings on both of your PCs and set the input and output devices. So let's talk about the inputs first. On your streaming PC, the input should be set to line in. This is because of that audio cable that we have running to the line in of the motherboard. On your gaming PC, the input should be set to chat mic. Now the outputs are where things can get a little tricky and confusing, but if you're also using the Go XLR, you'll be able to follow along with this perfectly because the Go XLR allows you to split all of your outputs to different channels so you can control them individually with the little faders on the front of your mixer. 
The output on your streaming PC should just be set to whatever your main audio output is, like your headphones or something like that. Mine personally runs through a sound card, but then goes into my in-ear monitors, so that's why it has something from Sound Blaster. On the gaming PC, this is where we have to make a few adjustments for the outputs now. So first thing you wanna do is set the main output to the system channel. So you'll notice you'll have also have a corresponding fader on your GoXLR for this. So once you set this, all sounds coming from your gaming PC, like your game volume or whatever else you have coming from like your main PC system will go to this channel. Okay, now that you have your mic working and your game sound working, but what about your chat with your friends like in Discord or something and your music? Well, you notice the GoXLR Mini, there's also faders for those two things, so let's set those up really quick. So for your chat volume, assuming you're using Discord, you just have to go into your Discord settings and under voice and video, make sure that the input is set to chat mic and the output is set to chat. This will make sure your friends you're chatting with come through on your chat fader so your, your audience can hear them. And then you can also control that volume uh, should it be one of your friends that yells a lot or gets really angry or maybe one of the people that are really quiet like a little mouse or something like that. You may have to turn them up a little bit. Now finally, the music channel. This can be set up using your music app of choice, but for this example, I'm gonna show you two different ways. So one using the Spotify desktop app and the other just playing music from a random browser tab. So with the Spotify app, just open that app up on your desktop and then go into your system settings, click on sound and then volume mixer until you see all of your apps that you can control from here. Now you'll probably notice that Spotify is not showing up right now even though it's open. That is because you actually have to start playing music for it and have volume come through for the mixer in your system to recognize that it's actually there. So once you get the Spotify music app to pop up, you'll just need to go over to the output device and set that to music. And then you'll now be able to use your music fader to control your music volume or mute it. And you can see the levels popping up as the music is playing. Using that same method, you can set your internet browser tabs to be set to your music fader as well. That's what I do. So you just have to open a tab, navigate to wherever you get your streaming music from, start playing that music, and again, once you start playing the music, it'll show up in your volume mixer in your, in your computer. And again, set the output device to music and your browser tabs will also play their audio in the music channel. And then you can control that with your GoXLR as well. Okay, whew, I know that was a lot. And if you missed anything, feel free to just go back and rewatch it or leave me a comment down below if something was unclear. Uh, or just again, watch it as many times as you need to get it working right. So I know it seems daunting at first, but once you have everything set up, it really does make your audio setup very simple and easy to use. But that's still the question, right? How do we use our audio in OBS so we can record it or broadcast it? It's very simple. For this, we just need to head back to our streaming PC. So once you have OBS open on your streaming PC, click the settings button and navigate to the audio tab. For this to work, you only need two global audio devices. So set your desktop audio to whatever you plug your headphones into. This way, all the sounds coming from your streaming PC, like your alerts when they pop up in OBS, will play through that channel and your audience will be able to hear it. Now, the only bummer about this is that you will not be able to hear it yourself because you will actually have your headphones plugged into the GoXLR, which is connected to your gaming PC, so you can't actually hear your alerts, you can only see them but you can hear them and make sure they work and whatnot if you connect your headphones to your streaming PC. Anyway, the last thing you need to do is set up your mic slash auxiliary audio to line in, and that's it. All of your audio coming from your gaming PC, like your game audio, your music, and your chat audio will come through that one channel. And it's very, very easy. Now guys, if you followed all that, you should basically be good to go. But I'm going to give you a little bonus and show you guys my mic settings and my GoXLR software you see here to help you get a more professional sound out of your microphone if you're a fan of what you're hearing right now. So now the GoXLR software has a ton of things you can mess with uh, and adjust your mic sounds. But first you wanna just go ahead and go to the mic setup tab first. And this is where you kind of pick what type of microphone you have. You see uh, you have the dynamic mic, which is what I'm using right here, uh, a condenser mic, and then or a uh, 3.5 millimeter mic if you're using the uh, the audio jack in the front of the GoXLR that would be located right here. Um, but yeah, so go ahead and do this. Do a couple of tests with your levels right here and set the gain to what you think it should be and then go ahead and press OK. So now here are my settings right here. These uh, these actual like 
you know, settings that mess with the sound right here. And this is how I get the sound that I'm using right now. So um, they, they usually start like this probably in your software uh, and show just a couple of things. But as you expand them right here, you can see that there is a lot more that you can tweak right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go spot by spot. So right here, the gate of my microphone. These are my settings right here. I go negative 47 dB. Leave this right here at 100. 10 milliseconds and then 200 milliseconds. So that is the gate of my microphone right there. That is that adjustment. So then going over here to the equalizer, you can see I've done a lot of different things. And now you'll probably have yours um, set without fine tune. So to get these bars up here, you need to go ahead and check fine tune right here. And then if you want to copy my settings, like I said, to just give yourself a start starting point, it's not going to be exactly the same for your mic because every mic is different. Um, you can go ahead and start with what I have here. Go ahead and uh, pause the video if you need to and take these settings down and then maybe tweak it to your liking if you want to. But this is right here what I use for my equalizer settings. And then all the way over here to the right, you'll see the compressor right here. So this is what kind of gives the microphone a little bit more of that uh, bassy sound and a little bit more um, punch and stuff like that. So I have my threshold set to negative 20 dB. The ratio is four to one. Attack is set to two milliseconds. Release is 100 milliseconds and makeup gain is 5 dB. So again, with this right here, you're going to need to adjust this to your microphone and your recording setting because uh, a couple of these different things right here, um, this is kind of what, what basically helps you cancel out some of that audio in the background, like, you know, fan noise, whatever. Uh, it helps take that stuff away. The threshold is mainly what does it. And then uh, your makeup gain, you know, makes your voice a little bit louder. So again, adjust this accordingly to your microphone and you should be good. All right, everybody. So with all of that, you should now be able to get your two PC audio up and running. And hopefully, even if you don't use a Go XLR mixer like me, you're still able to find this video helpful and, you know, use this process because it still does apply to other mixers and how you would set those up. So they probably just have a couple of different software tweaks that you have to work with or something. But anyway, if you did find this video helpful, please leave me a like and hit that subscribe button so you can see more tech content like this. Also, if you think I forgot something again or if something was confusing for you guys, please go ahead and leave a comment down below and uh, hopefully I'll be able to get back to your question in the comments because I always like to read those and make sure I get back to you guys. But anyway, hope you guys have an awesome day and I will catch you in the next video. Thank you.